begin today, Be'ez HaShem Yisbarach, the fourth Patek of Mesechte Ksubis. Zok Te'ilige Mishneh, Nairo, Shen Espatiso. So the beginning of this Patek actually is a continuation of the same the things that we discussed in the previous Patek. Then eventually it will go off into different subjects as well. But here the begin begins with the same halacha that which we really know already. Nairo, Shen Espatiso, a girl that somebody seduced her into a relationship and she gets paid for this, the different payments that we already discussed, Baishta o Pagama o Knasa. So the humiliation, the Pagam, her value went down, and the Knas that are paid, Shalavia. It all belongs to the father. Vatsar, and then there's an additional payment for the pain that she was, was caused to her, Betfusa, regarding a girl that was grabbed against her will, this is an Oynis. So then, that pain is also paid to the father. Rashi just says that the mission here uses the expression <coughs> that the Pasuk uses. Utfasa v'shach he grabbed her. So, but that's uh, the Oynes. Then, the mission b- continues of, as follows. What happens if Oma Omda Badin, she stood at a din with this man, before the father passed away. So, Shalav, whatever the Bezdin Paskin that this person has to pay, goes to the father. So if so, if the father passes away, so who inherits this money that the Bezden paskind that the father should get? The brothers, which is the father's sons. They, they're the ones that inherit the father. However, if she did not go to Adintaira with this person, and the father already passed away before, and now Bezden paskins the Adintaira between her and this man without the father here, Bechlal, so this money now, she gets the payment of the knas and does not go to the brothers, to the sons of the father to inherit this. So Rashi explains the reason for this is that when it comes to knas, that's something that the children do not inherit from the father at all. But when only money is inherited from the father. And now there's a big difference over here regarding this payment. Before the psakdin of the bezdin, the status of this money is, is money that's being paid as knas. Okay, we're, at least we're discussing the, the payment of knas, right? Let's first discuss the knas payment here. So because this is a payment of knas, this is something that the children of the father will not inherit it. And, and Rashi says in, in, later on here in the Mishnah that the reason is because the rule by knas is, as we learned in the previous Patek, maide be knas potter. If there's a self-admission regarding the payment of the knas, you're absolved of paying it. So therefore, this money of knas is not really a money yet. This is something that this person <coughs> could be maida and would be potter to pay. So how could we say that this is money that belongs to the father and that the children of the father, the ach and the brothers, should inherit this? This is not considered to be money, Bechlal. But once Bezna already passed in that he was chayiv, so now the status of this payment changes. It's not anymore considered to be knas. Once Bezdin paskin, so now he can't be maida anymore. He can't admit anymore to patr himself. Now it has the status of mamein. And if it's mamein, so then the children would inherit this. So that's the point that the Mishnah is saying over here. That at what point in time does the status of this money change from being knas to being a regular money payment from after there was the psakdin of the bezdin. Before the psakdin of the bezdin, it's just knas. So then the, father, the father's children do not inherit this. But once there was a psakdin of the bezdin, so then it's considered to be mamin and the children will inherit this. That's a pshat in the Mishnah. Now just one more detail here. There's a big discussion in the Rishayinim because this all makes sense regarding the payment of knas. But in the beginning of the Mishnah, it didn't mention only knas. It mentions the other payments as well. The Baishas and the Pegam and the Tsar, those are not knas. Those are a regular payment for, of money. So how does everything the Mishnah say here re- apply regarding that? Taisus asks the question, and Taisus says that possibly we see in the Psukim that we compare these payments to one another. That Baishas and Pagam, even though it's a money payment, but we compare it to the Knas. That's what Taisu says. But there are other Rishayinim that disagree, and so it seems so from Rashi as well, that everything the Mishnah here is saying now regarding inheriting this money, it's applying only to the Knas. And we're not discussing the other payments that were mentioned before. Over there, those other payments are regular money, the regular money payments, and the children of the father that gets those payments would always inherit it. Doesn't matter before the psakdin of the bezin, after the psakdin, the regular money payments. Yeah, okay. The the right. <laughs> so, so the Mishnah continues now with a similar halacha regarding this girl that became a begeris. Zok the Mishnah weiter, omda badin achale bagra. If there was a dintaire before she becomes a begeris. So what's the significance of being a begeris? As we learned before already, until the age of a begeris, which is about 12 and a half years old, she is in the possession of the father. 
But now, from the age of Begeres, she becomes completely independent. So if, if there was a dentator before she became a Begeres, Hare and Shalav. So the money, the best and Paskins, go to, goes to the father. May Sa'av, if the father passes away. So because there was already a Psak Din for this money that it goes to the father, Hare and Shalachin. So the brothers inherit this money. Lo yispika lamed bedin, achabogra. However, if there was no dentator until she becomes a Begeres. So now the dentator takes place with her when she's already independent. So now this money in this Psak Din over here belongs to her. Mm. Rav Shimon disagrees with everything we said over here. Again, according to the Tanakhama, what's the point in time where there's that change of the status of this money? The Psak Din of the Bezn. Rav Shimon says, no, that's not enough. If she did not yet collect the money, and, and the father already had died. So then this money will go to her. In other words, Rabbi Shimon says the status of this money here, this knas that's being paid, when does the status change? At the time when she actually collects the money. Once she collects it, so then it's real money. Until that point, it has the, we define it as knas. And if it's a knas, this is something that the children will not inherit. That's Rabbi Shimon's opinion. Okay, we'll see. The Gemara will explain the, the source of Rav Shem's opinion, based on the Pasuk. So, the Mishnah Vaita, Maisi Yadeha, the income of a girl that also belongs to the father. Right? As we learned already before, Kol Shvach Nurim Laavio, or V'chiyim Kerish is Bitil Ama, that the father gets all the income of his daughter, as long as she's a Naira. Or Mitziyasa, if she finds anything. So, who gets it? The father also gets this. So Afa Pisha even if she did not collect it yet, she did she worked and her employer didn't pay her yet. But Mesa uh, Av, when the father passes away, Arehin Shalachan. So who will get who will yarshan this? This goes to the brothers. Why? Because this is not knas, this is money. And any money, even before it's collected, it's money that really belonged to the father. The father was supposed to collect this money. So therefore, once if the father passes away, the brothers or his children will inherit this money. Starting off with the first halacha in the Mishnah. The Mishnah began here with the basic halacha of the knas and the boishas and the begam, that, it all, that you pay this and that it goes to the father. So the question is, my kamash malon. What was the chiddush of the beginning of the Mishnah here? Tanina. This is something we already learned before. Hamefate, person that seduced a girl into this relationship. Noisen shloi He pays three modes of payment, which is the, the knas and the boishas and the begam. And v'ha'aynis arba, and then ha'aynis pays four different things of payment, including the tzar. So what's the chiddush that our Mishnah is saying at the beginning of the Mishnah? Answers the Gemara. Um, one second. Uh, so, sorry, this is still part of that previous Mishnah that uh, the Gemara is quoting over here. V'ha'aynis arba dvarim, arba, and the Mishnah that we quoted from the previous Patek over there, it explains. Ha'mefate noisen, boishes u pegam beknas, the three payments of the mefate is boishes, pegam, and knas. Moisu v'alavaynis, by the case of anaynis, he pays one more thing, shenoisen the tzar, that he pays the tzar as well. So our Mishnah is not saying anything new here. So the Gemara answers, la via itzrichle. Over here, the Chiddush of our Mishnah is that the, all these payments go to the father. That's the Chiddush of our Mishnah. Frak the Gemara, that's also not a Chiddush here. La via nami pshita. It's self-understood that these payments must be going to the father. Why? Midukayoiv mefate. The very fact that you're saying here, that even in a case where he convinced her and she agreed, and nevertheless he has to pay her all these things and it goes to the father, from this itself we see that the father is getting it and not her. The Ila Atzma, if she's the one that gets paid, Amai Yoiv, why would he have to give her anything? If it's a case where he convinced her, so then what she did was with, with her consent. So we shouldn't have to pay her anything. So it's clear, we understand on our own, that this payment goes to the father. So what's the Chiddush here in the Mishnah? So the Gemara says, so those, these two points is not the Chiddush. What he pays and to who he pays is not the Chiddush. Rather, the Chiddush is, Omda Badin Itzrichelei. The Chiddush here in the Mishnah is the next halacha that it said, which is a new halacha that it never said before, in a case where there was a dentator. So over here, the Chiddush of our Mishnah is, Plukte the Rab Shimon ve Rabbanon. The Machleik is between the Rab Shimon and Rabbanon. What happens when there was the dentator? The Tanakhama says, from the time of the dentator going forward, it changes the status of his payment. It's not kanas anymore. But now once Bezden Paskin, it's considered to be a regular money payment. And Rab Shimon disagrees. Rab Shimon says, even though there was a dentator, it's still considered to be a kanas. It only becomes a money payment once she actually collects the money. 
So basically what the Gemara is saying is, the previous two halachas of the Mishnah is just an introduction to this main halacha regarding the Psak Din of the Bezdin in the Machlaikis of Rav Shem and Rabbanan here. Okay, so now the Gemara will eventually come to explain the Machlaikis here between Rav Shem and Rabbanan. What's the reason why Rav Shem says, Rabbanan's opinion is understood. Once Bezdin paskins, why should it be considered to be Knas anymore? The only thing that's unique about Knas is that it's a kind of payment that the person that's obligated to pay it could admit. And once he admits, he doesn't have to pay it. That's unique about Knas. Mm. But once Bezdin paskins, Knas should be the same like any other money payment. You must pay it now and there's no way you can get, get out of it. So why does Rav say that only when you actually pay it is it considered to be money? So the Gemara will come to explain what Rav Shem's opinion here is, but it gives a pretty long introduction here of another Mishnah in Masech Teshvuas, which will discuss also uh, this subject, and then it'll come back to explain Rav Shem's opinion. So Tanan Asam, we learned in the Mishnah in Shvuas. So this Mishnah in Shvuas discusses the halacha of bringing a carbon for a person that made the Shvuas Sheker. In what case is this? We say this every morning. When we talk about an Ezeo Makaima, the karbanis that are brought, so one of the karbanis is Asham Gizelos. What's this Asham Gizelos? Asham Gizelos is when someone comes and demands money of you and you deny it. Not only do you deny it, but you also swear that you don't owe the money. And then after you swore falsely, you come back and you admit, no, I do owe the money. What's the halacha then? Besides the principle that you have to pay for what you stole, you have to pay an additional fifth and you also have to bring a carbon which is called an Asham Gizelos. So that's what this Mishnah is discussing. So Tanan Asam we learned there, Anasto, Petisa, Biti, a person comes to someone and says, you were Ma'anes or you were Mefateh, my daughter, and therefore you have to pay for what you did. And the money goes to the father. And he denies it. No, I did not do this. And then so the father says, Mashpiyachani, swear to me that you did not do this. He responds, Amen, yes, I swear, the Amen is like you make a Shvua. So he swore now. And then he comes and he admits that he swore falsely and he's chayev to pay. So chayev will be chayev everything. He'll be chayev to pay the keren mm-hmm. principal and then a fifth and then a carbon as well. Asham gezelus. Abshemin paiter. Abshemin says in this case he'll be potter from paying. He'll be potter from the carbon. Why? Because this is a knas here. The father was coming to demand knas. Now we know what's the halacha of knas. She'enim mishalem knas al piyatzmai. The halacha by knas is when you, if you admit yourself, so then you don't pay this. So therefore, this is not considered to be money that you are ob- for sure obligated to pay that you deny, because this is a kind of payment that not necessarily were you even obligated to pay. When are you chayiv? This whole thing, this halacha of the chaymesh and the carbon, when it's money that you are obligated and you denied and swore falsely. But in this, with this kind of a payment, where you could have parted yourself, it's not even necessarily money you were chayiv would be chayiv. In such a case, when you f- swore falsely and then you admit it, there's no carbon for this and there's no chaymesh for this. Amrulai, so the chachamim say back to Rab Shimin. So you're giving a reason why you should be parted because we're talking here about a knas. But knas is not the only payment here regarding this case. You're right regarding the knas, that's not necessarily something that he would pay. How about the other parts of the payment here? The baishas and the pagam, that's money payment and that's something that he could never patter himself from. So for that, if he swore falsely and then he agreed, or admitted that is, he should be chayiv to bring a carbon and to pay the chaymish for this. So basically, the, so you see here, Machlaik is with the Tanakhama and Rab Shimon, what do we focus on? Do we focus on the aspect of the knas payment? And therefore for that, he's, it's, it's money that he would not necessarily be chayef, so there's no carbon for this. Or do we focus on the Baishas and Pagam, which is a regular money payment, and therefore he should have to bring a carbon. The Gemara will later explain this Machlaikis. Okay, so now the Gemara has an Iboye here according to Rab Shimon's opinion. Abai asks Rabbi the following question. A person says to his friend, Anasta upetisa is biti. That yet yeah, you went and you either either an Oynes or Mefater, my daughter, then But here the case was the father tells this person, and we were at the Dintaira already. And the Dintaira already was paskin that you have to pay me. And for who I met, and he comes and answers, Loyanasti, Veloy Petisi, never happened. I never had any relation with your daughter. And Veloy Madatani Bedin, and there was no, there's no Psaktin of Bezin either. Veloy Nishayafti, Lochamam, and I never owed you a penny for this. And Venishba, and then he swears also that this is not true. Vahayda, and then he admits that it did happen. 
So now the question is, let up Shimon Mai. According to Rab Shimon, what would be the halacha in this case? So again? When he was by the peasant, he didn't no, pay he didn't pay it. He didn't pay it. So according to Rab Shimon, the question is, what's going to be the halacha here? So the way Rashi learns this Gemara is, the question according to Rab Shimon is, do you have to bring a carbon for this Shavuaz Sheker in this case or not? So what's the question? Do we say that Kiv and the Ahmad Bedin Memaynavoy? When did Rab Shimon say before that you don't bring a carbon for this? Is because you denied something, which is a knas. So knas is not mumming. Knas is something that you could pat yourself from. So there Rab Shimon says you pat But over here, since the father said that there was already a dentator, and it, once it's a dentator, this transfers it not to be mumming. That's something you can't deny anymore. And on, on that, so once it's mumming over here, so machayiv aleh carbon shvu, so you should be chayiv a carbon shvu for this. So even Rab Shimon would agree to this. Rab Shimon before only said you potter because he said if you would have been maida, you would have been potter. Or perhaps Afagav the Omad Bedin Knas Have. Even though there was already a Dintaira, nevertheless, this is Knas. What does it mean that it is Knas? The Gemara will later explain what this means. But Rashi over here explains that what the, what the Gemara means to say with this Lashon is since Ikre Knas, since originally this was a payment of Knas. Even though now there was already a psak of Bezdin and it changes the status of this payment, now it becomes a payment of mummy that you can't deny anymore. But nevertheless, originally it's knas, so maybe you should still be potter of a carbon. And Rashi's opinion is that the Gemara's question is specifically Benigayatar carbon. Why? Because by a carbon, the Pasik over here says, and the Gemara will soon quote the Pasik, that this halacha of denying money that you owe somebody only applies to different kinds of payments that were not knas even originally like a pakadon, or like a geneve, or a halva, a loan, things that were a money payment. Over there, if you deny those type of payments, which were originally a money payment, over there there'll be a chi of carbon. But over here, this payment, even if now it's a money payment, but if originally it's knas, there won't be any payment, sorry, there won't be any uh, uh, carbon that you chai for this. That's Rashi's pshat in this Gemara. Teisvis, to the Shainim, have a different pshat in this Gemara, that the Gemara is asking the question, lav daf ke to the carbon, but we're going to learn the Gemara with Rashi's Pshat. Right now the Gemara is asking the question regarding the carbon. Do I say that because the status of this money now changed into mama and so you should be chayiv a carbon shvua for denying this? Or do I look at what the money originally was? And there, because it was originally knas, it's not similar to the examples that the Pasik says and therefore you'd be potter from a carbon. So Rabbi answers to Abaya, Amalei, Mimayna Have, once Bezdin Paskin, that Yechayev now has the status of money, or Mechayev Aleh, Karben Shvua. And therefore, you will be Chayev a Karben Shvua for denying this and swearing falsely on this. Okay, that was his answer. Now the Gemara will bring a, a few different questions that Abaya asked Rabbi. So Eisvei, Abaya asks Rabbi from the following Braise. It says there, Rab Shimon and Rab Shimon says, Yochel, I would think, a person says to his friend, Anasto Petisa is Biti. So it begins again, the similar like the had the previous Braise. He says to him, You am Anis, or you am Fata, my daughter, and Vuayim, and he denies it. Loya Nasti, Veloy Petisi, no, I never did this. Or another example. Here, all these examples the Braise speaks about are cases of Knas. He says to him, Heim is Sharchas Avdi, your, your ox gored and killed my servant, my, my slave. And, and therefore you owe me 30 coins. That's what you, the knas you pay in such a case. And this person denies it. No, this never happened. My, my, my uh, ox never killed your servant. Or he comes and tells him, or a case where the slave himself comes to his master and says, You knocked out my tooth and you blinded my eye. And therefore what happens? Such a case, a servant goes out free when a master does this to him. And who I man, the master says, I didn't do it, I never did this. So again, the, 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 here the argument is also regarding a knas, whether he is released from his master or not. And the nishpa, and this person that was accused with all of these things, and in all these cases, it's a payment of a knas, he swore falsely that he never did it. And then the hayden, he admitted. So Yachal Yechayev, I would think that he should be Chayev to bring a carbon for, for denying this, and then he admits it. Tamad Laimar, so the Shimon says, not the Pasik says, when it talks about that halacha of bringing a carbon, the Kichesh Ba Misa, you denied what your friend demanded from you, and the Pasik brings specific examples. The Pikadin, whether it was a deposit that you denied, the Begazel, something that you took from him, you stole from him. 
Oy Asha Kesamisoy, again another mode of Gzela, Oy Matzah Veda, you found a lost item and you deny that you had it that, and it belongs to your friend, Vikichishba, and you deny this, Venishba Shekher, and you swore falsely. So why is the Pasuk bringing all of these examples? Ma elum yechadin, just like in all of these cases, shame mamein, these are cases where it's money that you took from your friend, that you owe your friend. Afkal shein mamein, so too the chiv of bringing a carbon asham in, for this kind of halacha, when you denied it, and you swore falsely, it's only if it's originally a money matter that you owed your friend. Yatsu elu shein knas, and therefore that excludes all of these cases that we just mentioned, which are a knas payment. And for that, there's no chiv to bring a carbon, even if he swore falsely. That's the b'raise that Rab Shimon said. So now the Gemara asks on what Rav said. My love, don't you think, what is this b'raise speaking about? B'sha'omad bedin. Even if a person was, try, was, was demanding from his friend to pay him a knas, and there was already a dintaira that passed him that he's chayiv to pay the knas, and nevertheless, the halacha is that there is no carbon for this, even after there was a psak din from the bezin. Okay, why the Gemara is thinking that that's the Pshat on this B'raisa, we'll see in the continuation of the Gemara. That, that it, it, you see there from the B'raisa that it's talking about when there was already a Psak din from the Bezdin. So this is a question on Rabbe. Rabbe said, once there's a Psak din of Bezdin, so now it's not considered to be Knas anymore. Now it becomes a regular status of a money payment. But if you hear in this B'raisa, we see that Rabbi Shimon is saying it's not similar to the examples that the Pasuk says. And therefore, even after there's a Psak din of the Bezdin for this Knas, it still remains Knas and there's no carbon for this. So the Gemara first answers and says, Loi, shaloi amad badin. When Rav Shimon said what he said in the Braise, that because it's Knast, there's no carbon, that's only because there was no Psaktin of the Bezdin. But if there was, then Rav would be right that you would, uh, you would bring a carbon for this. But the Gemara asks, but that can't be, because v'hob midereshe b'sha'amad b'din. If you take a look in that b'raisa, in the beginning of the b'raisa, which the Gemara is about to quote, you'll see that over there, that case, that b'raisa must be speaking about when there was already a din and there was already a psak din. And if so, seifanami b'sha'amad b'din. So the seif of that b'raisa also must be speaking about when there was already a psak din of the, uh, of the bezin. What does it say there in, that, in the reisha of that b'raisa? The k'tani reisha, in the reisha it says, in the reisha it's quoting, Seemingly, another opinion, or this, uh, the Gemara will explain, this is an opinion of the Tanakama, which argues with Rav Shimon. And it says there as follows, Ainli, Tanakama says, I would only think that when do you bring a carbon for denying money that was demanded of you and swearing falsely and then admitting it? So I would think that this only applies only regarding such kind of money that you pay the principal of what you owe. Whether it's money you stole or whether it's money that you found that belongs to this person and you denied it, so then there would be a carbon for this. Tashlume keful, however, if it's kinds of payment of knas, like keful, when you pay double for a geneve, tashlume above chamisha, when you pay four or five times as much, when you steal and then you shlecht it or sell it, the payment of knas by einis and mefate, or by a Maitzi Shemra, when a person lets out a bad rumor regarding his wife that she had a relation with someone else, there's also a Knast there. Minayin, in all these cases, if a person denied it and then he admitted it, how do we know that he would still have to bring a carbon? Talmud Laimar, Pasik says a double expression. Umal and he violated this person, he lied, and then he admitted, admits that he lies. Riba just adds and says that even regarding these cases of Knast, there's also a carbon. This is the opinion of the Tanakhama, which is arguing with Rab Shimon. So now the question is, hey Chidomi, what's the case? Here? When is Rab the Tanakhama arguing here in this Braise? If there was no Din here yet regarding any of these Knosses, Kfeila mi Ike, is there a payment of Kefal? Is there a payment of Kefal or any of the other Knosses we're speaking about over here with any, with, without a Psak Din of the Bezdin yet? So as Rashi explains, the point that we already learned before, when it comes to knas, so because you're denying a kind of payment where you wouldn't even necessarily be chayv to pay this, because you could just admit and then be potter. So therefore, this is not a kind of payment that you could say that if you swore falsely about this, that you don't owe it, that you should be chayv any carbon. What Rashi actually says in the, in the first pshat regarding what the Gemara is saying over here, that kefal and knas, who says that the Ganav would demand this? Very interesting, Rashi says, the Rishayin discuss exactly what Rashi means. But then Rashi explains, like I said, based on what we learned before, that the point of here is that for sure the Tanakame would not say regarding a regular payment of Knas, 
which was not yet established that he even owes it. Bezdin didn't even paskin yet. How could you say that for this you have a carbon if you deny it? Not necessarily would he have to pay it. So therefore, the only way to explain, it's obvious, all what the Tanakhama meant to say over here is, B'Sha'omad Bedin. When there was already a Din and it was already Paskin that he's Chayev to pay the Knas. And that's what the Tanakhama is saying, even though it was originally Knas, but now that there's a Psak Din that he has to pay it, so he can't deny it anymore, and he came and denied this money when it was demanded from him, and then he agreed that he swore falsely, so then he has to bring the carbon. If so, if the ratio of this Braise when the Tanakam is speaking. So the case is that there was already a Dintaira, Sefer Nami Bishamad Bidin. So the Sefer, when Rab Shimon says that you still don't bring a carbon regarding all these Knossis, it's also talking about that there was a Dintaira. So if so, this is a question on Rabbah. Rabbah said that the Knossis, that you're not have to bring a carbon for if you deny it, that's only before Dintaira. After Dintaira, now it's mummy. And now if you deny it, you have to bring a carbon. But here Rabbi Shimon clearly says that even after a dintaira, you still don't have to bring a carbon. Omalei, so Rabbi answers Abaya. Yochil nilashon luyilach, I you as follows. Reishe b'sha'omad bedin. The first part of the b'raise is talking about after there was a dintaira on this knas. V'seife b'sha'loyamad bedin. Then the seife of the b'raise is talking about before there was a dintaira. And the cooler Rab Shimini. It's really all Rab Shimon speaking, and Rab Shimon here is coming to say the, exactly what Rabbi said. That when it comes to Knas, if it was after Dintaira, so then you have to bring the carbon, because it becomes mummy now. If it's before the Dintaira, then you're not have to bring a carbon, because it's still Knas. But, says Rabbi, I don't want to give you an answer, which is a deichik, it's, you have to squeeze it into the words of the Braise, and the reason why it's a deichik is because the Mkain Amritli, if I'll tell you that this whole Braise is all Rab Shim is speaking, so then you'll ask me, if so, Oi, listen to Reisha Rab Shim and Oimer, or it should begin with Rab Shim and Oimer, the Braise should start that this is all Rab Shim. Oi, listen to Seifer, David Rab Shimon. Or at the conclusion of the entire Braise, it should say that this is all the words of Rab Shimon. Why does it say Rab Shimon Oimer in the middle of the Braise? So, Allah, therefore, Rabbi says, I'll answer you as follows. Kula Bisha Ahmed Bedin. This entire Braise is speaking about a payment of Knas after there was already a Din Teire and it was Paskin that he has to pay the Knas. Vereisha Rabbanan, and like you see from the Braise, it seems from the words of the Braise, the Reisha is Rabbanan speaking, the Seifer Rab Shimon. And the safe of the Braise is Rab Shimon. So if so, we have it clearly in the Braise that Rab Shimon is saying that in a case where there was already a Din Teire, you still don't bring a carbon. He brings the Pasuk, Vekichesh, that as long as it was originally Knas, you don't bring a carbon. So this is a question on Rabbe. Says Rabbe, O Medin Allah, I will agree to you, Linyan carbon Shvua, that when it comes to the carbon that you bring on this false Shvua, the Rahmana Patre, the Teteire Patism of a Shvua, in this case, Mivekichesh. Because of what we learn out from the Pasuk of Ekichesh. Again, the Limud is from that, from the details. That it says in the Pasuk of Ekichesh, you see that only if it's a kind of payment that was originally Mamain, then you have to bring a carbon if you deny that. But Knas, even after there was a Dintere, and now it's a payment you have to pay like Mamain, but because it was originally Knas, you don't pay. He come in, uh, says Rabbi, when I said before that Mamain, that once there was a Dintaira, this Knas now becomes an obligation to pay and therefore it's Mamain. Have a Yerusha Lebanov. I was only saying this regarding the Halach of Yerusha. When it comes to Yerusha, children do not yarshim from a father a Knas that was owed to the father. Because this is not a kind of payment that the father would necessarily get. The person that owes the Knas could simply admit and not pay. But once there was a sack of a bezdin, and therefore he must pay it, over here the children will yash in this knas, because now it's mamain that is for sure owed to the father. That's the only thing that I was saying according to the opinion of Rab Shimon. So basically, Rabbe is retracting from what he said before. Before Rabbe said that once there was a sack of bezdin, it would be considered to be mamain even regarding the shvuah. But now because we have this clear b'raise that Rab Shimon says that regarding Shvua we learn from the Pasuk V'Kichesh that it's still considered to be like it was originally Knas. So therefore he says, you're right, regarding Karben Shvua, we look at the fact that it was originally Knas and there's no Karben Shvua. But regarding the Yerusha, the, who yarshins this? Could the children yarshin this from the father? The answer is, once there was a Psaktin of Bezdin that you have to pay this Knas, it's considered to be Momin. This is the distinction that Rabbi makes here now. Now, the Gemara asks from the mission at the beginning of the Patek that we learned here. 
Eisvei. So the question is, what did Rav Shimon say? So in the beginning of the Perek, we're talking about the Knas, the Knas of an Einis and a Mefate. So the question is, do the children yarshen this Knas if the father dies or not? So the Tanakhama said, as long as there was already a Psak Din from the Bezdin, so now it's mummy. So the children yarshen it. But Rav Shimon disagrees. Rav Shimon, Aime, Rav Shimon says, it doesn't matter that there was a Psak Din. The children will not yarshen it. Im spika ligbais sa'av, if she did not collect yet the money, and the father already died before, even though there was already a psak din from the Bezdin, nevertheless, harehen shalatzma. The money is still considered to be a knas payment. The fact that there was already a psak din does not change that. And she gets the money. So the question on Rabbi is, if you Rabbi say, Mame nave, that once there was a psak of Bezdin, so regarding Yerusha, now it has the status of a money payment, and therefore the children should yarshen this. Why is Rab Shimon saying that even after the Psak of Bezdin, she will get the Knast if the father died? Now that it's Mamain, the, ch- the, the children, the brothers, her brothers should yarshen this money. So here we see clearly, Rab Shimon says regarding this payment of Knast, even after the Psak of Bezdin, this is still considered to be a Knast payment, and therefore she gets it, and the children don't yarshen it from the father. Omar Rave, so Rave said regarding this question, that Hai Milse, this question here is a very good question. Kashoiba Rabbe Rav Yosef Esrim Vitartnishnin. Rabbe and Rav Yosef had this question for 22 years. And the Layifrik wasn't answered. Ah, the Yosef Rav Yosef Bereshe, until Rav Yosef became the Rosh Hashive, Opirka, and he answered this. So as Rashi explained, explains there that what happened is Rabbe was the Rosh Hashive for 22 years. And for that time period, he couldn't answer this question. Then, Rav Yosef became the Rosh Hashiva, and people didn't respect Rav Yosef the way they expre- respected Rabbah. And Rashi brings from the Gemara that says that Ra- Rabbah was the Oika Harim. Rabbah was very sharp. He could uproot mountains to answer questions. But this question he couldn't answer. So the Ebesha did a special chesed to Rav Yosef that did not have that same sharpness as Rabbah. He was a Sinai, meaning he was a big bucky. He knew everything, but he didn't have that same ability to answer questions like Rabbah. And the Ebesha gave him the kayak to answer this question that they had for 22 years. And what did uh, Rav Yosef answer? Shani Hasam comes to the knas of our Mishnah. This kind of knas by your Oynes and a Mafate is different. Even after the Psak of Bezdin, it still remains in its status of Knas and the children don't yashin it. Why? The Oma Krakas, here the Torah says, V'nosan ish ha-sheichiv imo naira. That this man that lay with this woman has to pay to the father, Chamishim Kesef. So it says, V'nosan, he gives it. So from this we learn out, Le'zichsa Torah la'av. The Torah says that the father does not actually have the rights on this money, that it's a money payment and not just a knas, that it's fully his, that we know 100% that it's his, that the children could yarshen it, Ela Mishas Nesina. Only once this person actually pays it. So it's over here specifically that there's an exception, where the Torah says only once he gives it to the father, is it his money that the children will yarshen it. And Rabbe, have it. This that Rabbe said, that knas payments, once Bezden Paskind, so now he must pay it, and therefore it's considered to be money, that the children will yarshen it, Bishar Knossos. By all other Knossos, over there I say that once he's obligated to pay it, he can't admit and patter himself anymore. So by other payments, we say that it's a money payment that the children will yarshen it. But over here, the mission in the beginning of the Perik, talking about the Knas by Oynes and Mefate, we learn from the word Vinosan, La Via Naira, that only when the father gets it, from him, from the person that gives it to him, then it's considered to be money that the children will yashin. So this is an exception. If so, frekte gemare, ela meyata, gabe eved, buy an eved as well, the chsif, the payment of a, of a person that uh, his ox gored this, this eved and killed him. So over there also there's a payment of a knas, the chsif, kesef shloishim shkolem yitn la You have to pay the master 30 coins. So the Torah uses the term yitn, you give it to the master. Hachanami, should we darshan the same thing that lezichse teire la adn ela mishas nesina? That the Aden, the master, this money that's paid to him is not considered to be an actual money payment that his children would yarshen it only once it's given to him. So how could you say that this is only an exception regarding this case of the Mishnah that's speaking about the knas of Oynes and Mefate and otherwise every other knas after the Psak Din of the Bezna is considered to be money. We find a similar lotion of Yitain regarding this knas by the Eved as well. And says the Gemara, it's not the same word, it's not the same expression. Yitain luchod v'nosan luchod. The word yitin means one thing and the word vinasan means another thing. As Rashi says, yitin means it's a command, you should give it. 
So not, not, he's not saying that once you give it, that, then it's his. But Nasan means something that was already given. And what it's saying is only once it was given to the father, then it becomes money. So that's an exception. Okay, so but now, based on this, the Gemara goes back to the Braise that we had on Omer Aleph, in Rab Shimon's opinion, right? So what did Rab Shimon there say? He counted a few different cases of Knas, that you, there's no carbon for this, and as the Gemara explained, that it talks about even in a case where there was a Psak Din, that you have to pay this Knas, but we learn out from the Pasuk Vikichesh, that there still will not be any carbon if you deny this payment. And the reason is because in that Pasuk Vikichesh, we see that it brings over there, the Tater brings examples only of cases that were originally Mamin. But now, one of the examples that Rav Shimon brought in the Braise, or the first example that Rav Shimon brings in the Braise, is this kind of knas that we're speaking about over here in our Patek, the knas of a Oynes and a Mefata. So if so, didn't you just say that the knas of the Oynes and the Mefata is an exception? So the Gemara's question is, Yihachi, if you're saying that this knas of Oynes and Mefata is an exception, that even after the Psak Din of Bezin, it's still not mummy. Because the Torah wrote Venosan, it only becomes money that's the father's, to, that the children will inherit it only after he got it. If so, Talmud Lemo and the Braise brings a Pasik to explain why even after the Psak Din of the Bezin, there's still no carbon for this. It's still considered to be like it was originally Knas. So what's the Pasik it brings? V'kichesh. But Talmud Leimar v'nasan mi boyelei for the first example that Rav Shimon speaks about, which is this case of the Knas of Enes and Mefate, he should bring the Pasik of v'nasan. That Vinasan says that not until you give the money does it have the status of mummy. Until then it still has the status of knas. So even if the Pasik Vikichesh comes to explain regarding the other examples of knas that Rab Shimon talks about over there, why we say that you're not high of a carbon shvua even after the Psak Din of the Bezdin, because it's not like the details that it says in the Pasik Vikichesh, which were originally mummy. But for the first example that he brings, which is the same knas that we're speaking about over here, the knas of the Ainus and Mephate, he should have brought the Pasik Vinosan to say that it's still considered to be knas until you give the money. That's the Gemara, Omar, Rave, so Rave answers to this and says, no, even regarding the knas of Ainus and Mephate, there is a scenario that it will become mamain through the Psak of the Bezdin, even before it was given to the father, even though, we, again, we just said that by Oynes and Mefate, this Knas is different. Only once it's given to the father does the status of this payment change to become mamain. But not, not like all the other Knasses, that it changes right after the Psak Din. But still, even regarding the Knas of Oynes and Mefate, there will be a case that right after the Psak Din, it will become a payment of mamain, just like all other Knasses. And when is that? Says the Gemara, Ki Itztrich V'Kichesh. Why do we need the Pasuk of V'Kichesh even regarding the Knas of Oynes and Mefate? Kagoin Sha'omda Badin. Over here regarding the Knas of Oynes and Mefate, where there was a Din Teire, Ubagra, and then before he paid it, she became a begeres, and therefore now she's independent. So if she's independent, so that payment of knas has to go to her, not to the father anymore. But now, Umesa, now she died, this girl died, and who gets this knas if the girl dies? Because she doesn't get it, so the father gets it instead, from her. So if so, if the father is getting the knas from his daughter, really now she's a begeres. She should be getting the knas. The knas is getting it from her. The hasan ki kiyaris avia. If the father is inheriting, is getting this knas. Minadidakayaris. The father is getting the knas from her. The knas is not something that goes directly to the father here. Over here, the knas is coming from his daughter to the to the father, because she was already a begeres. So what the Gemara is saying over here is, as Rashi explains, the whole drasha we brought before. Venosan, la via naira, that we learn from the fact that the Torah writes Venosan, that by this knas is an exception, that only once the knas is paid, then we say it's not knas anymore, but it's money, that the children will inherit it. And so that's only over here, when it's la via naira, when the father actually gets the knas. So that's where the Torah says Venosan, this exception that only once it was paid is it mom and not knas. But in this kind of case, where the father did not get the knas directly, the person that paid it never gave it to the father. The person that's paying it really is giving it to his daughter because she already became a begettist. And the father now is getting it from his daughter because she passed away, so he's yashining it from her. In such a case, the whole drasha of Venosan that we said before does not apply because it's not going to the father. The Pasik over there, the context of the Pasik is Venosan la via naira. So it's in this case 
that I say that even regarding this payment of knas of Oynes and Mefateh, it's just like all other knasses. That as soon as there's a psak din from Bezdin, it's not any more knas, now it's mamain, and therefore, if it's mamain, the children will yash in it, and you would think that maybe there should be a carbon shvu as well. And therefore, it's for this case that you need the Pasuk V'Kichesh to teach me that only if it was originally knas is there a carbon, and if not, there's no carbon. So we see over here that there is a case, even regarding the, the knas of Oynes and Mefate, that I need the Pasuk of V'Kichesh. So the Gemara asks on this, now another question. This is really a question that is going back on what the Gemara said before. What's the conclusion of this whole thing? The Braise that we're quoting over here from Rab Shimon, what is the Braise speaking about? A case that was originally Knas, but now it's not Knas anymore because there was a Psak of the Bezdin. So it's really Mamin. But we learn out from the Pasuk of the Kichesh that because it was originally Knas, so it's not similar to the cases that that Pasuk is speaking about, so there's no carbon. But how does that fit into the words of the Braise? Ihochi, if so, what, what does the Braise say? Yotsu elu shehen knas, that from the Pasuk Vikichesh we learn how to exclude these kinds of payments, which are knas. How could he say that they're now knas? Mamenu. If we're saying that the Braise is speaking about a case where there was a Psak Din, so it's not knas anymore, at this point it's a, it's, it's a payment of mamen. So why, how could the Braise say it's knas? Omer Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, so therefore Rav Nachman by Yitzchak says, Yotsu Elu She'ikran Knas. What the Bryson means to say is, we exclude these cases that were originally Knas. As long as it was originally Knas, you can't be compared to the examples said in the Pasuk V'Kichesh, that you have a Karm for it, and therefore you're Potter. Another question was asked on what Rabbi said. So again, what Rabbi said before was that once there was a Psaktin regarding Knas, so regarding the Yerusha, once, once there was a Psaktin, the children will yarshan it. It's not Knas anymore. But regarding the carbon, though, it's still considered to be like it was originally Knas, and therefore there's no carbon. But now the question is from the first Mishnah that we quoted in the beginning of this discussion. So there's a Mishnah in Shvuas over there that we quoted. What does it say? Rab Shemin Paiter. Rab Shimon Paters, and the case over there, as we learned before, was when someone, a father, came and said, You are Mafato or Ma'anis, my daughter, and the person denied it, and then afterwards he agreed. So in that case, Rab Shimon says, You don't pay, you don't bring a carbon, that is. He's speaking about a carbon. He says, You don't bring a carbon. Why? Because what the father was demanding was, was a knas payment, and because that's not something that you pay when you admit, so this is not money that you're really denying that you for sure would have had to pay. This is kind of money that you would, wouldn't necessarily have to pay. So that's what Rab Shimon gives a reason. Rab Shimon says, you know why you put it from the carbon? Because this is a kind of payment that you wouldn't necessarily have to pay. So if so, this is a question what Rabbi said before. When could you say that this is a kind of payment that you wouldn't necessarily have to pay? Before the Psaktin of the Bezdin. Then you could party yourself. Ha'amad bedin, but once there was a psak din from the bezdin, the mishalem al piatzmoi. So then you have to pay, even if you would you would admit there's no way out over here. Carbon shvu and ami mechayev. It seems like Rav Shimon would agree in such a case that you would have to be a, bring a carbon shvu. So this is a contradiction to what we said before. We explained that even Rabbi agrees that we see from a brayse that we learn from the kichesh that because it was originally knas, the fact that now there was a psak of bezdin and it's mama and it doesn't matter. You don't bring a carbon shvuah for this. But over here, from the Lashon of the Bray, from the Mishnah, that is, in, in Mesech the Shvuas, we see that the only reason you don't bring a carbon is because right now it's knas. And you could still deny it, you could still admit this and not pay it. But otherwise, once there was a Psak Bezdin, there should not there, there should not be any difference between this and any other moment, and there should be a carbon shvuah. So we have here now a contradiction basically in Rab Shimon's opinion, the way Rab is explaining this. Answers the Gemara. The way to understand that Mishnah and Shavuos that we quoted in the beginning, Rab Shimon the Rabbanan Ka'amalahu. Rab Shimon is only saying what he says according to Rabbanan's opinion. Lididi, according to my opinion, like he said in the Braise, Afagav the Ahmad Bedin, when it comes to a payment of Knas, even after there was a Din Teire, Rahmana Patre, the Teire says he does not bring a Karb Mishvuah, and we see from the details in the Pasuk of Akichesh that there's no Karb Mishvuah in this case. But what he's asking according to the Rabbanan is So even according to you, so you say that there's no difference between before the Psaktin, after the Psaktin of the Bezin, but you should agree to me 
that if there was no psak din of bezin yet, you should at least agree to me that there should be a distinction here. The chi katova knasa katova. That at this point, it still is knas. If there was no psak din of bezin yet, and the father was demanding of him to pay for the fact that you were mafata my daughter, my, my, or mamanis my daughter, wouldn't you agree that before the psak din, that it's still knas, and it's money that he wouldn't necessarily have to pay, and therefore there should be no carbon shvu in this case? So Rav Shimon himself, Taka holds like he says in the Braise, that even after the Psak then, there still is no carbon Shvua because we compare it to the cases that it says in the Pasuk V'Kichesh. But Rav Shimon was asking according to the Rabbanan, according to you, you should at least agree to me that before the Psak then of the Bezin, this is still a p- payment of Kanas. Why should there be a carbon on this if not necessarily would he have to ever pay this? Umayde Beknas Pater. Again, because Maida Biknas Yipater, so therefore this is not money that he's denying that you would have to pay, and therefore there should be no carbon. So the Gemara now explains how, how would the Rabbanan respond to this? The Rabbanan Savri, the Rabbanan say, Kikatava, when the father comes and says, You are my anas and my father, my daughter, and therefore you owe me money for this, and the person denied this, Really, what he was primarily demanding was not the payment of the knas. What he really was demanding is the payment of the boishas and the pagam, the humiliation and the fact that the value went down. And therefore, that's actually a payment of mamay. So therefore, even before the psak of the bezdin, he can't patter himself from this. So this is something you should for sure be chayav a carbon shvu on. If so, how do we explain here the machlaikis between Rab Shimon and the Rabbanan? Basically, when a father comes and says, You are my father, my daughter, so Rabbanan are arguing and saying, The father was demanding mamay, regular payment of mamay. What's the mamay? Baishis and pagam. So if he denies it, there's a chi of carbon for this. Rab Shimon is saying, No, the father was demanding knas. And therefore, if he denies this, there's no chi of a carbon for this. Knas is something that you wouldn't even necessarily have to pay. So what is their argument? Is this Knas or is this Baisha Pagam? Really, there's both here. Um, Rav Pape, Rav Pape says, Rav Shimon Sava, Rav Shimon's opinion is, Le Shavak Inish, Midi de Kayetz, Betova Midi de Loi Kayetz. A person would not let go of demanding something which is a set amount of money that he knows he's getting and demand something which is not a set amount of money. Since over here, there's two kinds of payments. There's the Knas payment, which is set, and then there's the Baisha's and Pagam payment, which is not set. So when the father demanded the money from this person, he was focusing on the knas, because that's a set amount of money, and therefore that's guaranteed exactly what he's getting, and that's what he meant to demand, and therefore if the person denied it, there's no carbon on that, because it's, it's knas. But Rabban and Savri, however, Rabban's opinion is, and no, there's a different svara. Leishavak inish, a person would not let go of demanding midi something, the chimaydi bay miftar that this is, kind of, this is a kind of money that even if the person that you're demanding it from will admit that he owes this money, it will never patter him because it's money that he owes for sure. It's not knas. V'tava midi and it'll go and demand money that if this person admits it, he'll be patter from. So therefore, when the father demanded the money from this person and he said, you are ma'anas and ma'fata, my daughter, what did he mean to say? He, mean, he meant to say, you owe me the baishas and pagam. That was the main thing that he was focusing on because he knows that this is money that the person can't patter himself even by being made on. So therefore, the Rabbanan say, if so, there's a payment of money that he was demanding. And for that, there is a chi of shvu'eh, even before there's a psaktin of bezin because it's a regular payment of money.